Well, thanks for joining us today, everybody. We're very lucky to have a great man in the studio today. His name is Jim Ranto. I'm sure many of you know him. He's a two-time pro smooth champion. He's a coach, choreographer, judge. He does it all, this guy. And uh, also, he's, he owns a studio in Phoenix, the Academy of Ballroom Dance. Um, this guy's an incredible record with professionals and amateurs, had great results, and we're very lucky to have him with us today to be able to pick his brain a bit. So thank you for joining us, Jim. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm happy to be here. It's about 118 degrees outside, but nice and cool in the building. <laughs> <laughs> Good to be inside, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to jump straight into it here, Jim. Uh, I read you these questions ahead of time, but I didn't really give you much chance uh, to think about them, so I'm just going to go at it and we'll get your response. Uh, starting off, what obstacles or challenges did you have to come or did you have to overcome on your dance journey and what thoughts would you share with someone who is currently pursuing a similar path well i'll i'll this this is really like a two point answer because i started as a student i began dancing like a casual thing and when i learned about competition that's what interests me although ballroom dancing in its own wasn't of that interest to me but competing was so once i turned professional which wasn't i did amateur for a couple years became the US amateur champion and then turned professional there was always this stigma attached to me that I was still in the minds of some of the judges a student so I had to work extra hard to a um, produce professionalism in what I did show commitment to the style and because I had another career before I started dancing I had to show that I was committed to the dance career and the dance business and I had I had people judges telling me directly say you know people still look at you as a student and that you could leave the business and go somewhere at any time and do whatever you want and I mean I, th I think that's true for anybody at any time but the fact that um, I needed to show my commitment to the business entire professionalism and that I was going to have longevity in the field I think made people more comfortable marking Janelle and I uh, better or more appropriately to where we were. So that was one obstacle and that's not everybody's obstacle but it, but I have noticed with some of the pros that come up from the amateur ranks that little thing sort of follows them. But you gotta remember we all learn. We're all students. It doesn't matter what we call ourselves. We are learning from the beginning. This is an entirely new skill and you can see what a new skill it is because if you watch any of the TV shows where they make people who have vast backgrounds of dance to dance, ballroom is hard. So it, everybody's learning the skill. So it doesn't matter your background. But that was one of the things we had to overcome. From a learning perspective, I came from a purely athletic background. I had no dance in my life. I still to this day, US champion, a lot of accolades, very well trained. I still don't fancy myself a dancer, but I know how to dance. So I always treated what I did probably a little differently in those days because I started in 83. And um, I don't think people trained as athletes then. Now we have dance sports. So, you know, kids are like training in the gym and they got their sweats on when they arrive at the, you know, like in those days it wasn't really that way. So when I took a athletic person's training mentality to dancing, I think for me, it gave us more structure. And so overcoming the non-dancer mentality and non-dancer artistic body and trying to make it, me, for me, be me a more athletic pursuit, I think that was sort of a challenge at the time. But in the long run, I think what it was better is it gave me perspective of how to teach other people who were similarly, had similar backgrounds, but didn't have a real focus on how they trained. So, for training other pros and training high level amateurs, having a formula, a system, a regularity, and basically mindless repetition produced consistently better dancers. So I think um, the obstacle, trying to make an athlete into a dancer, was also something that helped me train other people. And I think that that's been both, uh, both a, a blessing and uh, an obstacle to overcome. And so, you know, Janelle and I, proceeded to train like athletes so that we could be artistic. I didn't know that was a thing at the time, but it's the only thing I knew. And um, it turned out to be somewhat successful. And then overcoming the obstacle of the predetermined view of 
where I came from and who I was. And other people have the same, like, like say, it's oftentimes I always say to people, oh, uh, I hear from judges, oh, well, if they would lose a little weight or they would do this or she would be a little taller or this couple would be better suited. Well, there is no perfection. So everybody's overcoming some mental stigma. So I think me having to overcome and, and work harder to be professional was also in a way a blessing because it helps me give people advice to what they do now. So that's a long answer to a very <laughs> short question, but I hope it's helpful. No, very helpful. And a, a lot of things I had to keep myself, I had to hold my tongue to keep oh, from yeah. asking questions because a lot of uh, different thoughts came about as uh, and subjects came about as you were going through your answer yeah. there. But um, I didn't want to <laughs> take no, us no, off. You, to can, a, you can interrupt. I can go on a roll, man. Don't worry. Oh, about I, I know. It, I know. <laughs> but no, that was very, very insightful. And it, it's nice to hear. I know not everybody comes from uh, the amateur background going from am you know dance competing for a while and making a name as an amateur right and then going professional and that's that's different too from like i compete as an amateur for a while but it was more so like my training to be a professional i, I yes. was not uh, uh i did not uh do well I, I mean i did well but i did it in a small studio yeah. uh in a, in a fred astaire in a small region and I was young, not many guys, but I didn't make a name, I guess kind of is my point. I didn't yeah. make a name for myself versus, I love how you threw out the, and then we won the national champion, the, the amateur <laughs> national champion, uh, and then uh, just mold right over it. <laughs> like, no, it was not, and then we, and then, yeah, we just uh, did this. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I learned long ago that I, I don't like to, to wear my resume on my sleeve, so to speak. I think you know sure. where I am today and what I can offer people is is enough. I don't I don't need to sell anybody on you know if they're listening to me they probably are, want to be there to hear me. You're so focused on the ones that it. are listening and are yeah. wanting to help. Absolutely, <laughs> I think that's another important trait. I, I like that. <laughs>